Good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language call. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Tonight I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about um, how uh, our etymology meets each other. And I'm going to challenge, you know, how the Western lineal uh, etymology worked and how I think uh, how it should, should work and also I'm going to talk a little bit about the, how the ancient look at their spiritual world and how it gradually uh, formed the um, unbalanced uh, gender world that we are living in now. Okay, I'm going to start my slides. Oh, by the way, uh, there is a number up there and then if you're watching it now, uh, you can call in at the end of the show, near the end of the show, I'll see if I have some time to pick it up, okay? And um, if you uh, think that I'm going too fast, you can always go to the YouTube, again, type in the program name, you can find all the episodes. I think today we are on the 41st uh, episode so you can find the last 40 uh, episodes in the YouTube by typing in the name okay so I will start uh, playing from the start okay um, again uh, I will show you the basket starfish what it is like uh, the perfect way would be in m m imagine that uh, it is a globe like thing you know all those branches actually uh, uh, branch out in every single direction 360 degrees okay this is the core that I, I definitely think that we share uh, as a language core that we are not separated family trees because uh, that view uh, of language family uh, actually bring in in, uh, human hierarchy and that's why I think we need to change it as long as we uh, stop looking at human uh, language that way we can also speak to each other in a very level ground and because all culture exists you know, at the same time and then we just branch out at a different way and, and develop in a different speed okay I'm going to um, continue um, uh, the, this uh, slide is about sharing the same concept in sound I will uh, again I will explain the same thing again and again so I can drum it into your head okay uh, first of all that is the uh, S and the Z trail in the in the threat making world and then finally you will trail it into a stronger uh, thread or rope right there so uh, it's always still called the S trail or the Z trail by the weavers okay so as you can see this is the Sumerian you can see if you turn it 90 degrees straight you know you will uh, uh, I kind of see how it worked also. It has the sound of C. It uh, still carry the meaning of to bind something, you know, so you need a thread, a rope to bind something. And this is the Chinese writing. Um, uh, some of the reading, you know, it actually has a, a many different reading. And some of the reading that is connected to the same concept is sin or sin, you know, that is also uh, relating to combining something into one or relating to one single thing or, or relating to a thread if we pronounce it differently as sin okay so uh, you will see that even the English word single you know part of it is also from the very ancient sound and then this is also again another Chinese writing as you can see you know we have two ply uh, thread and then we have also three thread also and then for this one uh, one of the writing is sam okay or sam or tam and then it means to join to mix which is remotely you know uh, echoing uh, what the Sumerian uh, meaning is and then you will see the Sumerian also you know there's a rope or thicker thread it's called salmon and this is uh, a rope okay so you can see that the ancient already distinguished a two or three ply thread but the sound is actually very very consistent and we use it uh, metaphorically you know as to join something that's why the Greek word synchronize you know sin synergy or the sin part is also you know relating to the same sound since ancient time and also symphony either sin or sim okay symphony is uh, definitely you understand that uh, everyone you know speaks with one voice okay so also in English 
colors you will have singular similar and same and then uh, I will show you other writing system this is South Arabic this is also the S you know it's closely related with the thread and if you speak uh, Hindi or, or, or Sanskrit Sinoti is uh, something to do with thread so the Sin is also still uh, consistent and then uh, or you will see that sometimes you will follow one sound the other one follow the other sound like this old, old Hungarian runic is to do with the thread or rope also but it is following the H sound you know if you go back to my episode explaining the difference between the H and the S you will see okay so uh, I also want to point it to you uh, there are some times and you know things in nature that form similar concept in our brain just like the staff right here that is also a Y shape right there but then um, you will see if you travel uh, back in time you will understand that a lot of the shepherds and when they walk around they always hold a stick like this is actually you, you know used to twine the, the thread as well so this is also other than the staff meaning authority in a way it also subtly means you know that these Stuff that people use to wind the, the fiber around so finally it will be trailed into these threads so uh, in certain way um, the staff itself also meet with this um, the thread itself okay so you have to be really flexible you know when it comes to the ancient world and and I will see uh, in this slide, I will show you some remnants of, of the ancient hunting culture that goes around, you know, the world. It seems, uh, look at this, you know, of course, you know, you have a particular name called boar, right? But then it is still the pig family. And um, look at this, this is ancient Chinese writing. We have the same symbol right there. It is uh, basically meaning, you know, uh, you have a rope, you know, to tie that animal up and uh, it pronounces so for us so means animal or beast in the wild okay and then um as time went by you know this is some thing like uh, 3,500 years ago as time went by we have another word uh, carrying a, a, a sound a slightly different this is so we will pronounce it this as so okay again all the sounds that I made most of them are in Cantonese you know a southern Chinese dialect which is very ancient okay so actually uh, means um, a dry meat as you can see you know they are in, in in stripes of meat you know when they dry it so they can travel with it this is how uh, even now uh, from ancient time to even now you know how we dry the meat you know to bring for long distance you know as a kind of supply okay um so now i will show you a german word you know this is sow and what is sow but the English sow okay so even though the uh, spelling look different so you can see that the sound it made is actually the same so as um, as confident as you are you know that the alphabetic system conveys sound I can tell you that it doesn't still uh, our memory still plays a very important part because otherwise you know uh, how on earth you will think that this sow and this uh, sow will pronounced the same way so we also judge you know our certain words you know by the context okay so there's a lot of uh, different reason that we read certain things in a, in a different way so what is sound if you look at it carefully this is actually you know almost like a summing up of how human beings started to domesticate and you know at least the pig itself you know from the boar you know how it gradually become you know the domestic pig okay so uh, I will show you the Western uh, lineal etymology. If you look into the dictionary, you know, if you Google it, uh, the, the etymology of sow, you will get all this. You know, they will tell you that it was from Middle Dutch and from Old Dutch, from Proto-Germanic and then from uh, Proto-Indo-European. So everything is just a straight line like that. And then uh, and then they will go on to tell you related to Low German, Western Frisian, in English and then Swedish and Norwegian it's everything is like a straight line and then um, they also of course they also uh, take uh, pay attention to certain um, dialectic voices too so I can tell you that most of the dialects you know in different parts of the world most of them actually hold more ancient sound because when you are separated from the mainstream civilization most of the time you know actually very ancient sound stayed in that area 
area. So you will see that, you know, even though the spelling is a little bit different, uh, I can assure you that the sound might not be as you can see it, but you will see a general uh, trend of how the the sound actually mutate from from time to time, from area to area, because we actually lived in a different time frame. You know, even though uh, it seems that we lived in the same time, just like uh, when you go to a mountain in a remote village, you know, sometimes they hold very very ancient sound in a slightly different way. So. Now I show you, you know, the same thing, but from a different perspective. Again, this is sow pork in uh, dry meat in, in Chinese. And then this is so uh, the beast, the animal in ancient Chinese. And then uh, this is the sow, the writing of it. You have to pay attention to this writing. This is a rubbing, so it's a little bit dark. I hope you can see it, but I compare it. Um, this is uh, the fine food. You know, as time went by about 2,500 years ago, this is actually became, you know, a payment for the teachers to teach you. This is just like a school fee, okay? So the word actually slowly you know related to gentlemen and so on because you know when you pay this to your your teacher to teach you just like in the western world like uh, Aristotle and also Socrates and all at that at that time that people also pay their teachers to to teach them so it is exactly the same system but I want you to compare to Sumerian Sumerian look compare Sumerian this part uh, against this part in the Chinese writing. I hope you can see it. It is exactly the same as something dangling right there. And interestingly, the Sumerian already have a meaning of to pay, you know, because in ancient time uh, for bartering system, you know, all the material is actually a payment by itself. Okay, so uh, I now I bring you to the more kind of uh, modern uh, version of the word. This is German sow, which is the pig, the female pig and then Dutch soap and then African you know the soap you will see that it seems that the spelling are different but the S and Z is constantly mutating between themselves and then the English sow even though it's spelled as so okay but when you are talking about the pig it is actually the sow and then um, I will branch it out to two very interesting Germ Germanic words this is a juke and so okay so it has to do with to pull to drag something along this is uh, the the female pig and this is to pull and to drag okay so but i want you to compare to some ancient chinese this is joke okay this is very fam familiar i mean similar to this one joke for us to means to capture to catch of course you to have to capture to, to catch you know you you need to use a rope you know and then um this is sock compare this sock to this one you can see very clearly that it's really pulling something along and then it, it's uh, related to the rope of to bind something up obviously this word this sound were different mutation to do with the hunting when you needed to to capture something and and hold them and drag them back to your village okay so as time went by you know there is another word in Chinese as you can see there is still the the uh, rope right there we pronounce it as chok what is chok but livestock you know um, nowadays you know this is what we refer to as livestock so still it uh, goes back you know to the whole uh, system of how the ancient stuff hunting and then they started to catch the animal and started to domesticate them and one thing very important to domesticate you know you need more female than male male you just need a couple of them to um, to uh, inseminate the rest of them you you do need more female because it is the female that makes a big hurt you know possible um, most of the male will be would be killed for meat only but the female will be kept for, for for uh, giving birth, okay? So um, now uh, after I give you that 
breathe you know comparison so you will understand how I look at the etymology and then now I go back to what I couldn't finish last week this is a very interesting sign you know from ancient time it seems that you know to deal with the ancient spiritual world you know they deal with you know something coming down from 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 uh, an unseen entity you know so this is an ancient Sumerian pictograph and then it become the uh, uh, cuneiform right there it is as I said last week this become it, it, the explanation of some cosmic uh, cosmic energy that enabled uh, any movement and, and cosmic activity so it's like the super soul of the universe and then there's uh, all these highlights are the I mean the the in red brackets you know they are the Chinese writing so we share exactly the same thing from that we mutate into different thing and then it becomes a very very important symbol for us as the determinative of the anything to do with uh, uh, spiritual uh, teaching or rituals okay so um, you will see that um, but from that I'm not going to carry on that I want to show you some uh, other uh, branches out from the same symbol this is uh, a Chinese word one for us it actually means you know uh, some kind of speech you know or, and also uh, the cloud and the air it, it is also you know from some unseen entity that the air comes out and interestingly this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph this is also you know carry the 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 sound of war and then uh, I mean W and if you look at the spiritual world up to this very day you know the Tibetan manuscript are constantly starting with this very important symbol right there whenever they start to write about the teaching of a certain master spiritual master this is exactly the beginning that they need to put on to tell you that this is the word this is the teaching of the spiritual master so you will see that this is exactly used in a very very subtle subtly similar way and then but I want to show and again I want to show you the development of this sign and in Chinese we also have this three lines of air and then we add this T some kind of T sign right there it we for us we have the sound of Fu Fu for us is air coming out from the mouth it is uh, it can mean uh, calling shouting screaming or simply exhaling uh, some air okay so you will see that from um, from full you can actually link it to the uh, to the uh, uh, Greek uh, origin of the phone phone is actually also wind coming out from the mouth which actually becomes sound and that's how your telephone the, the word the part phone comes from is the sound of the wind okay so uh, of course you know from the mutation of sound you will also the from the fur per you have the per and the per you can uh, understand it as how something expire or, or, or spirit and something coming out from per from the mouth okay and then the the b and the mutated to b you can understand it as some air blowing out from the air from from the mouth and then from the B uh, uh, linguistically it also mutated to V you can understand it if you blow something out it is your voice coming out okay so it makes sound and then uh, it goes back to from the V back to the W and the W actually also has a very closely mutating uh, sound which is the R the W and Ra okay the Ra is of course you know in uh, if you go back to the semitic world you have you have this ruh ruh in is actually the wind the air the smell and also the soul in the semitic world and of course to link to the english world you can understand that then it is rhapsody rhapsody is something that comes out from your mouth you know of course up to this very modern time even the word rap you know when you rap a song it's also what's coming out from your mouth and interestingly if you go back to ancient Egyptian uh, hieroglyph the owl is actually the mouth form and if you go back to ancient uh, semitic uh, writing you know ancient Aramic the, the the P is actually you know also the mouth form so all this sound at a certain time you know is really closely connected to what's coming out from your mouth okay so I will show you 
further on other than this you know I again and again I when I was talking about H I talk about the the light airy sound <sighs> okay that like airy sound you know we also use it you know it's almost identical for from that we use it as hey hey ho okay so or hi we have different sound all begin with h and also this is either o or ho okay so it become the um really the uh animal sound as a living sound as a e i o u the vowel okay whenever you say oh ah all this sound when you express um, surprises it is actually uh, a sign that you are living so this animal uh, form actually become uh, the uh, very essence of living entity okay so uh, you, if you can follow the Chinese writing you will see that you know from the mouth also also uh, air comes out this is you right there you again this is a semi vowel right there so uh, that's why a lot of the air sound also related to the all the vowel sound and also this is su you can see that also part of that this is like you're you're saying souffle souffle is also something when you blow something out you know of course souffle in french now has become a very light fluffy cake okay so uh, i will show you uh, here is a bunch of latin word that coincide with or uh, at the same time what the chinese are using to express all those words like oracle also ventus is wind you know all this four is word and flow is blowing out spiro is also you you breathe out halo is also breathe out you see it's very consistent aura anima like the animal that you have souffle and sono which is to blow and then also the sound and of course i will bring all these english word to you you know from the w all the way the wind the word the voice the verb the blow the spirit also the phone on how and hala oracle and rhetoric all these are related to the very early expression of the, the the sound from heaven okay and this is the voice from heaven or the cosmic manifestation okay so last week i couldn't finish this uh i was talking about the different way of saying the same thing this is sumerian dingy and then this is the chinese di, dai or di okay this is all related to the ruler of the sky and then the turkish still have this you know this cosmic uh, creator the tengri and then the tin in Et etruscan in ancient god you know also the tin in chinese in chinese this one d is used as a ruler of the earth and then this is used as a ruler uh, in the sky okay so now i separate this two and i'll let you see what it's uh, also related to if you look at the d sound and you will have the dios in in ancient greek and that's why the d form is always this triangle that's how the ancient without needing to write all the people when they see this sign they know this is a place of the Dior's you know that's how they where they go to the temple to worship you know this D this ruler you know which uh, give them the justice and then and of course gradually it become pagan and then but I will go back to show you the similarity between this very interesting writing this is Sumerian you have to pay attention to the triangle the triangle it is a later development but the very early triangle this is a very female sign and you will see that it's also part of our Chinese the Dai or D and then uh, we have also the pubic triangle written like that and then um, of course you know the ancient time you 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 wonder why all the triangle all of a sudden take place like that this is the pyramid in the ancient hieroglyph and people do not need to write or read you know they see symbols all around them so all this female you know forms to it where they uh, they worship until this become a real writing you know until the phoenician and the ancient uh, greek you be this be one become the d letter okay uh some uh, in ancient hebrew you understand this dalet dalet is means door or the you understand this delta delta is still the entrance of a river so both of it actually you know is subtly referring to the door of the female and the delta of the river of, of birth okay so this is was a very matriarchal world and as i said you know as hera gradually lose its sound the h you know the greek uh, actually started to stop 
pronouncing the H sound and then it become a patriarchal world where Zeus started to you know rule the world but then I, I want you to pay attention to what happened at that time in the world when all this triangle gradually gave way you know when writing took part a more alphabet you know you will say that uh, this is David the start of David okay David is written like this but if I work it back to the ancient world people would understand like this a D wow is actually the the, the the reverse you know the versal of the D so when you do that it actually really become the start of David from the, from all those um, reality people recognize people started to pay more attention to written symbol or painted symbol okay so uh, later on you know when from Dior it become the Christian Dior's you will see that there are different science signs coming in and then it become more complicated in the next slide I will I will explain it um, quickly I hope I can get it through um, this is beginning the creation of a gender imbalanced world uh, if you look at Greek itself the Dior's and the Dior's actually is very closely sound so if you don't know how to read or write, you know, you might be actually saying the same thing. It is just visually, dif visually different, differentiate the two, okay? So if you are just a farmer, it really doesn't matter. You are still following the, the all, okay? So, and the D, actually, this is one of the written form of the TH. You can understand it as the I. Of course, you know, the uh, the Chinese also have a very uh, interesting eye right there uh, explaining the spiritual world. We have the Song of Man. And then uh, if you go to ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, this is Ma, a sound. This is the eye. And then um, you can also understand it as a well, right? The, uh, you can also understand the sun. Really, from here, you can understand it from a, a matrilineal uh, perspective or from a patrilineal perspective from the same sign okay the eye is the uh, neutral form but the well is female the sun is actually male so um, you will understand it the female oh, sorry I think I cannot finish it today again but I will just concentrate on this next week and uh, I will hope I can give more time in that specific thing because it will explain to you better how a matrilineal world come to a patrilineal world. But thanks for watching this.